imagine being your own island, completely self-sustaining yet connected? Imagine living in a house that knew what you needed before you did, like when to boost your power production to meet your monthly power bill, or when to generate extra for profit. Unfortunately, this is not yet the reality for many people. Imagine living in this island paradise and getting up one morning to find everything in your fridge spoiled. There's no water to drink, and you won't be having a shower before going to work. This is the reality of living in a remote community where access to secure, reliable, and affordable energy is a luxury and not a basic right. And sometimes, it's the reality of living in a city without a stable electricity grid. I experienced this firsthand while I was working on my PhD abroad. The fragility of the weak power system, the blackouts, at first they frightened me as a normally bustling metropolis turned eerily quiet. And then it began to concern me. I was appalled to discover that not only was the cost of electricity in mainland Brazil expensive compared to my Canadian baseline, but that the cost of energy on remote islands was extortionate. Not only expensive, it was shipped into the island only twice a year as diesel fuel. I was existentially torn, and I thought to myself, there must be a better way. And then I began to dream. I dreamt of a way in which the innate resources of a location could be harnessed in a manner that was environmentally sound, that would create a robust network of electrons to stabilize the power grid and prove to be more affordable to its users. And then I got to work. Energy demand is growing, and people are struggling to access secure, reliable, and efficient energy. Not only in Brazil is the cost of electricity so high, but across the entire planet, particularly where diesel generators are used for energy. We see a high cost of living correlated to poverty. 20% of the planet, that's 1.3 billion people and growing, does not have access to electricity. And of those that live in remote communities, that number grows to 90%. This is Fernando de Noronha, Brazil. It's where I conducted my research. And it's not unlike our own remote communities in northern Manitoba or elsewhere in the world that rely on imported fuel for energy. It suffers from an unstable and costly electricity system, and its demand is growing. In fact, in some locations, the cost of electricity is so high in remote locations, it's 37 times higher than in urban areas, even in developed countries, such as Canada. But the problem can't be solved by using one renewable resource, because the problem with one renewable resource is in the fluctuation of its availability as shown here in a one-month snapshot of wind resource. You see, there's always wind, but it's highly variable. And the variability of this single resource can't solve the power stability issues alone. So I started to build a system, combining one, then two, then three renewable generators, adding various forms of storage, like batteries and compressed air, and keeping some diesel, just to compare. And I started to see some trends. I saw an inherent complementary generation amongst the renewable resources, stabilizing the power flow and creating a more robust supply. Like a recipe, the various ingredients of wind, solar, biomass, and storage complemented each other. And when I calculated the cost, the energy of this system, it was more affordable than using diesel power alone. It increased the renewable energy penetration and created a more robust supply. But that wasn't enough. It needed to be intelligent. It needed to be able to communicate. 
It needed to be able to collect information and make decisions upon that information for where the electrons needed to flow, whether to supply or to storage, or to be pulled from storage to power your air conditioner when you come home from work on a hot day. This showed that multiple renewable resources had complementary characteristics, and when deployed properly with storage, enhanced grid stability, reduced the cost of electricity, and generated 100% renewable power. Yes, 100% renewable energy is possible within certain times of day and depending on how the system is designed to behave. You see, the solution isn't in one, two, or three resources, but in the combination, the communication, and the integration of these resources that we build robust communities. By combining various resources, we know at what time of day we can expect which generation to perform. Not only for that day, but for days, weeks, months, and years ahead. We know at what time of day we can expect to use live resources like solar or wind, or when we'll have excess to deposit into storage or to be pulled from it, and even how much diesel we can scale back to and replace with biofuel. By choreographing the energy flow, we know at what time of day we can expect 100% renewable energy generation and how that corresponds to a reduced cost in electricity and total grid stability. So we need systems that will be able to make smart operational decisions, knowing what to deploy when, in an optimal way. We need systems that will be able to solve these big, complex data problems in real time. And we need systems that will be able to be flexible and agile enough to work with any type of renewable energy technology and storage, allowing customization at any level, be it residential, commercial, or industrial, at the utility scale, microgrid, or off-grid, providing the best operational strategy for the user. So now we can begin to design and build our cities in a more holistic manner. Life in the connected city will include the intelligent energy management and movement of electrons, the smart grid. It'll include the implementation of clean, digitally connected technology, like green buildings, via the IoT, the Internet of Things. It'll include smart roadways and transportation, food and waste management, and a more holistic approach to city planning, including elder care, and advanced digital connectivity for homes and businesses. And in order to do so, we need to start with our next generations. We need to ensure that our schools are green and smart. We need to ensure that we have policy in place to allow us to create our homes and buildings as power assets, mortgaged against the power that they will produce. And we need to have revised financial models in order to support this. Take my example of an integrated energy plan for schools. These energy schools are green buildings. They're an opportunity to build energy-efficient, higher-performing schools with environmental benefits, offering higher learning environments that are economical to build today and operate for years to come. This will transcend into our manufacturing facilities as we build the factories of the future that will ultimately build our homes and cities at large. And there needs to be a holistic approach into how these buildings are integrated into the communities around them, including food production and harvesting and wellness usability. And in order to get there, we need to change some paradigms. We need to change the paradigm of energy generation to move from a centralized system to distributed generation. We need to change the paradigm of the conventional electricity grid. 
we need to change policy to ensure that we can allow smart and clean technology and energy. And we need to change our building and electrical codes to require construction practices that integrate this technology. And we need to change our financial models to ensure that we can build our homes, our properties, our buildings as power assets mortgaged against the power that they will produce so that we can truly own our own energy and ensure that planning our energy, our energy futures is the global standard. After all, energy is a long-term investment like our homes, and the power is in the plan. Smart buildings connected to the smart grid will build smart cities, communities, and countries. No longer is your home just your castle, but your power asset and your own island. And if we apply the proper forethought in the design process, rather than at random, we'll be able to build smart cities and smart countries together. Thank you. <laughs>